initiative to amend the act, uh, Oil Supply Act of 2003, in order now to move to G2G, which is government to government, as a policy shift, um, and also ensure that uh, UNOC, the Uganda National Oil Company, comes in to be the lead and major and only supplier of fuel to the country. And you'd also want to note that the history of the supply chain of fuel uh, through Kenya was initially through what you call the OTS, the Open Tender System. And when President Ruto took over power, I don't know about that, he, public knowledge, he made a shift to G2G because Kenya had a major shortage of uh, forex. Of forex. Well, well, President Ruto is one who initiated first the government to government. Government to government. Now, as it were, the, the argument that uh, Honorable Ruth Nankabura placed before Parliament and as guided by the President was that um, there was a lot of loss uh, to what you call middlemen in Kenya and it was then subjecting the high cost of fuel at the pump price. At the, uh, and, and you note that um, the argument here is because there has been a rise in the pump cost, in the fuel price uh, in the country and in the region. It's also a global factor. But let me go back to the origin of this framework. You recall that uh, there are four things that have caused the high cost of fuel at the global level. One is that the Ukraine-Russia war, which then banned or gave Russia the embargo from the Western Axis. Um, and Russia, which is a major oil supplier, was cut off from the supply chain at the global level. Two, you'll also note that uh, because of that shortage, there was uh, definitely now an initiative which was carried out by Saudi Arabia uh, of recent to try to reduce the output by one million barrels uh, every day. That reduction obviously drove the cost of fuel to a high level, a new dimension. The third component, which has emerged obviously, is that uh, the geopolitics, and as fuel is a geopolitical matter, you'll find that um, at the global level, the fluctuations of fuel as driven by the cost of fuel at um, the New York Stock Exchange, which is driven by uh, at the plots what you would call the, the cost of a barrel, has also gone up. Uh, and if that increase uh, is what also caused the cost of fuel to go up. The fourth, which is now creating the simmers, is that normally during the winter time, the cost of fuel in the European axis or the northern axis goes up. And because most people want to heat, naturally the cost of fuel goes up. But the shift has now been brought about by citing that um, on the side of Kenya, which went and negotiated with Aramco, with the Saudi Arabia company, and negotiated with the, camp, uh, with the countries like, uh, like uh, United Arab Emirates and Abu Dhabi, the supply chain to Kenya, which deferred payment in forex for some time, I think the initial period was nine months. It has been extended to next year, December. And it has got a surcharge of cost for fuel. That means that you put in uh, cost of money. And Uganda was paying for that cost. And yet we were paying for that fuel in cash. So indirectly, we are paying for certain costs. If I'm to again give you another narrative, the position is that uh, when you get the middlemen, what you call the forex traders, fuel oil traders, Uganda or the oil, oil OMCs, we have 170 oil marketing companies in the country. 
yes. mm. And when you look at the market, three companies, Shell, Hero, Protar, and Starbucks, control 46% of the market share, even Starbucks. Even Starbucks. Mm. That, that's the same way you may be right. Mm. And as Starbucks is a new entrant. It's a new entrant, but they are very aggressive. <laughs> Okay. The, the point that you also need to know, yes, John, that uh, the other fifty-four percent, mm. the other fifty-four percent of what you call one hundred and sixty-seven oil marketing companies control fifty-four percent. What does that mean? When you tabulate all this entire supply chain, Ugandans, com Ugandan companies have hardly have any single share. Hardly any single share. Now. What is fuel and where does the cost come in? And that's why I want to bring you to, to understand the framework very clearly. Yeah. When fuel comes into Mombasa, mm. the costs that are embedded in are basically fees from a Kenya Ports Authority KPA and the pipeline that is through Kenya Pipeline Corporation KPC. Then you have the handling fees. But because Ugandan companies do not have all, most of them do not have the financial muscle, especially the 54. They now fell into the trap of a cycle where you have had to, averagely most of the time, the Kenyan companies speculate and buy fuel and hold. Then, because we don't have the financial muscle, they buy in bits. That cost amounts to about between 8 to $10 million per month which is a minimum of about $96 million a year. So Uganda was losing that to the Kenyans, for you to understand the context of what you call the supply chain. Now, in the supply chain of fuel in this country, you have what you call downstream, which is the flow of fuel from Mombasa to Uganda. To Uganda. Then you have midstream, which is obviously, if you want to look at it in the broader context, is a refinery in the country. Then downstream, I mean, uh, downstream, uh, uh, which brings in uh, our crude oil supply to Mwanza, to Tanga, through the pipeline, as it were. Now, to get you to understand the whole framework, Uganda consumes 7 million liters, between 6.5 to 7 million liters a day. That gives you a fuel, a fuel. Mm. That gives you approximately between 200 to 210 million liters a month. Last year, we spent 1.6 billion dollars on fuel imports. Now, the true thing that you need to see is that in the, flow ch uh, in the, in the downstream flow chart, where has Uganda been losing? One has been the forex traders. Two, the fees that speculators put in. And then three, you have also got to understand that in terms of the supply chain, for example, our company, Mahavi Infra, we have storage capacity of 70 million liters of fuel. This is the largest and we occupy 50% of the hospitality or the, uh, the, the storage capacity of the country. The other rest of the country, including the UNOC uh, 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 storage tanks yeah. in, in Jinja, have a storage of uh, 30, 30 million liters, 10 being petrol. We're talking about the main, I mean, storage capacity. In yes. ginger, mm -hmm. which has got so 20, yes. now it is back to, to so, you know, mm. 20 million is diesel, 10 million is for petrol. We do not have strategic uh, fuel reserve, therefore, we don't have capacity to, if you are to follow the act of 2003, mm. it means that the act which specified very clearly that a country must have capacity to store fuel for at least 10, year, 10, 10 days. That can only be now guaranteed by Mahadi. Now, in terms of the supply chain... Does Mahadi have the fuel now? We, we, are now, we have now imported and brought on board over 60 million liters yeah, into yeah, the country. Mahadi. Mahadi. Mm. So, for you to contextualize, I want you to understand that in the 
in the arrangement, Mahadi has reduced the cost or reduced, reduces the cost of fuel by over 50% in terms of transport. Because of shipping. Because of shipping and the economies of scale. Mm -hmm. Because each barge carries 4.5 million liters. We launched the one empty Kabaka TV about a year ago. We launched yesterday MT El Mount Elgon, which also carries 4.5 million liters. Meaning that in terms of saving for the country, for the palm price, the reduction of fuel and logistics by 50% is a plus or an advantage in the country. Finally, if you want to get a context of values, value chain, a trailer which carries fuel from Eldoret, Kisumu or Nakuru, uh, will charge 10,000 liters. 36,000 okay. liters. Mm -hmm. Between 33 to 36,000 liters. Will charge 161 shillings per liter. Ours charges 64 uh, shillings per liter. And if you want to know that if the cost addition to it is taxes, uh, for diesel is 1,350 for petrol and 1,280 for diesel. Now, okay. mm -hmm. and then kerosene is 200. Just, just, just a small one before. Yes. Because you've put in a good calango for, for, for your company. Um, I hope they're doing good things. <laughs> But um, so this directive of the president, mm. um, does it affect your company is the first question. Two, does it annoy the Kenyans who are going to lose out on some money? And three, does it annoy that 54% constituency in the fuel fraternity? It has got uh, several implications. Mm. Number one, Uganda's fuel will be cheaper. That's, let's, let's get that first. In what time frame? In, in the time that you're going to G2G. Okay. Uh, because the OMCs have already... Yeah, yeah. Have already let, let him finish. Let him finish. Let him, let let him address these questions, let me, then I come to Let you. me get to you yeah. to understand. Mm. <coughs> go on. Mm. Go on, Captain Mike. If you go, if you go into this, mm. you remove, first of all, the eight, six, eight, eight to ten million dollars loss to those speculators per day. Yeah. Get that to understand. Two, is it easy Uganda has been feeding or mm. paying into the Kenyan economy mm. the millions of dollars which Kenya benefits in order to pay its suppliers. Now that money is going to remain here to the account which may be extra depending on what parliament determines and it will now then be paid directly to the supplier. What Uganda will pay now is the fees. How does it affect us? It is important, that was the first question you asked. It is important for you to understand, being a logistical and hospitality company, our main initiative is to see that we, at all costs, reduce the cost of movement of fuel into the country by gaining the economies of scale and reducing the transport mm, costs. And you seem to do that. And we do that very well. Yeah. Now, I want you to contextualize this. If Uganda continues in that direction, because the critical point that you now, where the argument moves in, is the singular, single supplier. Mm. That's where Parliament will come in and argue. Mm. <clears throat> the supplier is Vitor. Vitor owns VTTI in Mombasa. Uh, Vitor also owns Shell Vivo because 100%. Shell has got 152 petrol stations in the country and is the leading market, uh, market player in the supply chain of fuel in the country. Now, therefore, you want to understand whether from a liberal economy, where economies of, of, of uh, demand and supply come into play, that is where you need to find out. Yeah. That's where the argument is. Yeah. But I support the policy of giving you know the dominant arrangement of managing the supply chain to the country like Ethiopia has done. Mm. A very, very good background, a very good context, uh, and you delivered it extremely well to the understanding of Honorable Samajo. Mm -hmm.
Isso. <risos> Só não você mudar o seu microfone agora. E aí? Eu entendo. Eu entendo o seu microfone. Ele foi quebrado muito bem. Você vê, Oscar. First of all, international trade is not as simple mm. as the uh, NIM people are presenting you. When I mean, there's the a bigger thing. question for you. What, what are they been waiting for? Yeah, let, let me start with, with the... Magufuli becomes the president in Tanzania. He says, no, we know where sugar is manufactured. How can this Muswahili man be making a lot of money? So, he, he dispatches his Minister for Finance to go to Brazil, to go everywhere, and uh, created a shorting. Eventually, he discovered that these uh, people that uh, make Mukura is dismissing as speculators, they are not just only traders, that the guy in Tanzania was actually investing in sugarcane growing and processing in Brazil. So they told the Tanzania. Him, yeah, they told him you go back to Semuju in Zanzibar. He's the one for that territory. Wow. So the minister kept because to, to, to get him to get him out of business, the first thing they did was to impound his containers and then they say they have this, this and this and that. So when they came when they came back and they had they had been referred to the same man, he said the first thing is the apology. <laughs> you, 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 you spoiled my name. At that time, they were even getting uh, sugar from. <coughs> they were getting sugar from uh, from Zanzibar. <laughs> so I, I am sympathetic to the approach that the government is taking. Hopefully, that they they, we, we they, have they did that they, they did they did they did the research, mm. and they will not cause us a problem. That is first point. The second point. I I, I don't know which government is pushing it for this and feels very good for the public. Look at the telecom industry. They liberated it. They killed it. the Ugandan company. Sold its assets and some of them almost given out. Some of them even to the competitor to the MTN. Oh, yeah. That's something that Ethiopia, Ethiopia doesn't do. Look at the banking sector. All the banks were given away yeah. And we are, the other day, no, 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 we now yeah. need a local bank because we can't continue this way. Yeah. See, the policy of your government yeah. 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 is to bring investors, is to total surrender. Now they are telling us, ah, wait a minute. So, petroleum product, we must do the importation. At the beginning, on the surface, it actually looked like they are the ones who are going to do the importation. Only later to learn that actually, as the uh, American people has able to explain, that they are a in a business mm. with one supplier. They have even signed a contract even before the law is done in the parliament. As usual, they will come to parliament and blackmail everybody this contract if you don't own a read. The same thing they did when they brought Pinetti. When they brought Pinetti, we were told, you see, we, 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 are, we already have a contract. If you don't approve this motion, we are going to begin paying uh, fines. This, yes, and almost uh, even something good. Why do you do it that way? Why are you in the hurry? At least you begin by doing uh, it alone. Uh, and Mike Mukula says that's where they, he didn't say problem, he said argument. Is me, I would say the word he meant was problem. Hmm. So you <laughs> <laughs> challenge, okay, <laughs> that's where the challenge is. He has okay. worded it very carefully. If, if I find you at my house and you are running from my house at a terrible speed, I'll think you have done something bad. That's how you are behaving. So even when you are doing something that you are presenting that it's good to the country, first of all, we are very suspicious of you, but two, you are on conduct. That you go and, uh, and <laughs> say the contract, and then you come here and say, hey, please do a lot very quickly, we want it. And, let me, let me and then, and then the, the, seven, the same the seven the has become the Kayungirizi. Mm. Yeah. Yes, because that's problem. We remember yes, Nairi Power signing contracts that we are guaranteeing the levels of Lake Victoria. The country told him, don't sell Umeme. Then later he said, this Umeme deal is very bad. Now blaming everybody. So, I, 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 you know, yeah. 
I, I have been reading the, the, two, the two versions of Unsowing the Mustard Seed by uh, Norman Tumuhimbisi. Um, by who? Norman Tumuhimbisi. Tumuhimbisi. Who wants to draw? <laughs> you know, I <laughs> had two different issues of it. And so when this conversation, and I've got a copy, and when this conversation comes in, I, I just look back. Um, I just wonder, for a, a regime that came, uh, to blackmail the citizens of the Uganda that UPC was so bad that the best way is to kill these systems and liberalize and liberalize to the extent that we hand over our government oh, and our well, lives yes. articulate this than Mike because Mike you genuinely almost nearly persuaded me and, but I look back to a little bit of a hole on this presentation the transport elements where is our, our infrastructure you're absolutely right to talk about it from the coast from the, the, the Kenyan side Quite clearly, I've been telling most young people I meet around that, you know what? If part of the Kampala traffic thing, and we're actually discussing health and agricultural implications in terms of health early, early today. If our rail systems were working, you know, um, um, I don't know how much it would be the cost of transportation from Mombasa to Kampala. And I think this is one of the things that need to be embedded. And the reason that these guys came and found trains, they, uh, we, we used to pick from Sorota to Kit to, to Pakwach. NRA has actually sunk it completely. I, Ironi ironically, as a matter of interest, you know, and I must say this, I've got an interest in Nagongira. The other day, two councillors from Tororo were, 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 were sent to jail, allegedly for uh, supporting a demonstration over a terrible Nagongira road in, in Tororo. And I wonder that if people can go to jail for that, for a road which is so bad inside town, and we're talking infrastructure as part of the, part of the conversation. What is in the country are bad. Yeah. The other one is so terrible. Ibrahim, you need to come to Nagongara one of these days and see. No, no, no but, the, but the point is this, that um, the, the drive for excess profit must come to a stop. And I know while I'm an optimist, Ibrahim will simply say that, but can you really stop it under this regime? If it were the, quite clearly the case, you already mentioned it, the question of our banking institutions, you know, the, the, the broader financial institutions, including insurances, our health services, completely privatized, educational uh, services uh, privatized. Um, it's very clearly the case that I don't have anybody in my mind who will trust the process that this is not a business confined now in the name of government, but to a few individuals with access. I'm not suggesting Mike would be one of them, but it's actually shocking evidence that Shell, I, don't be, I would be telling people without actual evidence, that Shell, Total, and uh, Starbucks, I didn't know how much I came to the suspicion that Starbucks is possibly the third in that element. None of them are, are local providers. It's and, just and, extraordinary. And, and they're just new on the market. So and they just, just new. And you can actually feel them. Well, and they belong well, actually to Total. One second. Your guide of here, no? Mm. Fuel supply downstream mm. is, correct, is, a, is a bit controlled by foreign. Companies, all. Namfi, you are on air and on microphone. Oscar, I've been taking my notes. You did? Since I first heard the tone. Even today, you've been taking Even today, notes. I took more notes. Mm. Oscar, we shall read about um, some of the stories about the tone online. Mm. The tone, um, in, in 2020, the U.S. fined Vitor millions of dollars, saying the company had manipulated market prices for fuel, for fuel imports into California. According to Reuters, the company paid over $95.7 million to settle charges of corruption based fraud attempted at market price manipulation. In the same year, Vitor paid $164 million to resolve allegations by U.S. of giving bribes to secure oil products deals in Latin America. Earlier in 2019, the company was paid $6 million for an alleged infraction on the market supplies. Mm -hmm. Further, it is alleged that the controversial operations in 2020 controversial tactics to charge a record price for its energy plant and dry house power plant. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. So this is Vito, who has come now to save us. This is the reputation of Vito globally. Manipulating prices, involvement in Iraq oil, oil for food exchanges, involvement in Turkey, Ukraine, and Russian oil mafia cartels that have been running around <clears throat> Europe for the last three years. He not even just involved, heavily involved, heavily fines. And this, this information is public because these fines are public. These court cases against Vitol are public. And yet we sit here and want to hand over our souls to Vitol to save us. 
as I was saying in the break, this is like running from the witch doctor only to learn among night dancers. <laughs> No, no, thank you. No, Uganda is not the, 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 the station's official. No, 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 thank you. Oscar, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. These good intentions, um, 70% globally, most countries, except the government, are only caused by 70%. But look here, Oscar, what is the best way to go about this? The reason why we are where we are is the very same government officials who got us there. The very government officials who sold our souls to these middlemen in Kenya and who have been ripping from these middlemen and the Ugandan, the, the Ugandan Wanaichi have been the ones paying the high prices. And none of these people have ever come out to even complain about these prices. Europe has never come out. To tell us we are fighting these prices, we are fighting we are we've been making this noise. The prices go up during COVID. We see the global prices going down to even the negatives. Our prices continue soaring. We see uh, the Ukrainian war starts with the prices go up. Uh, when the repercussions have ended, their agreements, oil, Russian oil is back on the market. We don't see these prices going down. Right now, our prices are going up. I don't even know which excuse do they have now. And yet, not at any given time have I ever had a you know, official coming to tell us that we have to deal with this crisis, coming to tell us that we have to do something about our lack of reserves. We had reserves in Ginger. They handed them back to them. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, government officials, let's go to this Ministry of Energy. I'm, I'm mentioning you know because they're the ones who, who are purporting to become. The, the what? The the, the, the No, no, no. They are a new but company. They are a new company. And they are not purporting. They are now being handed oh, over. Let which, me not which has many of our Ministry of Energy. Uh -huh. Let me say Ministry of Energy. Nothing. Which many of our That would yes. be the good thing. Ministry of Energy. Mm. Ministry of Energy has never come out to protect us against soaring fuel prices. Even when palm prices keep going up. Even when middlemen keep, um, I won't use a bad word on air, I will keep, um, Messing us up. <laughs> and yet now, the talk comes very, very dirty, very, very implicated in every manner of scandal globally. And yet, the same Ministry of Energy looks to this monster, this diabolical creature, to come and see. You're, you're, you're being a lawyer. So. Number two. You, you okay. being a lawyer. Mm -hmm. so. What happens if the prices don't go down? What happens? Do uh -huh. we have these markers? Those are better mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. From what to what? If they tell us they are removing middlemen, and what if they don't go down? Do okay. we then chase them? Is there any measures in place that we've, we've tied ourselves to them for five years? Because the initial deal is for five years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So within those five or years. Or if we start a middleman war with Kenyans and uh -huh. so on. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that end? Okay. We are starting global wars. And then um, the other thing. I wanted to point out, Oscar, the same government that has left, left us at the mercy of these number plate fans who are going to charge us 735,000 shillings per number plate. <clears throat> they are businessmen. They, they, the same government which has left us at the mercy of those people is purporting now to save us from Kenyan middlemen. I really don't think that will wash. So at the end of the day, let's not, let's not um, Erode even the little trust you guys have in government, and they don't have much. Okay, they don't have any. But then, when you come again to, mm. to promise that to look out for us, we're not going to believe you when, thank on you, the other you, hand, you. you're leaving us at the mercy of some other they, class. They, 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 they. Many, okay. many will say we, we will agree with uh, Mike Pekula and Nibra Semojo that the move may be good and the argument is where you are placed <laughs> without using the bad words you have yes. used. I didn't use bad words. Yes. Uh, honorable. She just <laughs> interrupted. <laughs> I agree with you. She didn't use any bad word. This, this time around. <laughs> this time around. <laughs> Is it because she was read? She she read everything on on Vito. First of all, the facts uh, which she came up with uh, were useful to many listeners. They didn't know about it. And are in the public domain, yes. international domain. They are there, yeah, but many of our people, is, they don't know how to, you know, doing research, simple mm. basic research. They don't do that. But I will say that Oscar and Captain Michael Mukura, my uncle knows this. In Kenya, the most powerful 
all politicians are businessmen. And the politics of Kenya is so intertwined with the business. This biggest business called fuel business has Kenyan politicians in it and therefore internal Kenyan politics. After the previous regime uh, lapsed, a new political class came in and their rivalries. And, and Captain Mukula knows this more than anybody of us in this in these studios. There are fights of trying to destroy each other economically and politically. And the fuel business is at the center of it. There is another group, by the way, even when you talk about this particular company, one of the five Starbucks, he knows that that company is, we can't even be, we can, there is public knowledge, it is a Ruto company. We all know it. So as we talk now, last week on Wednesday, there is a court order which has given a, what we call a conservatory or a, an injunction against the steel. The, against the fuel directive. Yes, against And you know, the one we've signed, including, you know, being a party to that suit, they have sued, you know. So this whole thing, the, the, the contradictions are just beginning. And let me tell you, and again, my uncle Mike knows this. Fuel business is one of the most dangerous businesses in the world. In the world. I, 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 I happened to play a little bit when we were trying to ritualize the law in this country. And I know I got so, far, so many facts about this industry that sometimes I, I feel since <laughs> we talk about them. They are so scared. Nobody is going to allow this deal just to go on. Forget it. It's going to be a fight and a fight and a fight. And I can tell you, Mike, if you guys never envisaged this fight, you are going to do this country a very big disservice. And the consequences of it will certainly be counterproductive. At the end of the day, we'll have a crisis and the prices will go up and the public is going to come hard and hard on you. Why? Why did the government, for example, in my view, rush and sign a deal without regularizing in the laws? Why? Because if you don't do things transparently, however well intentioned you are, people doubt you. And that's why the problem is, Oscar, however well intentioned, is there a problem? We all agree. We all agree. Nobody doubts it. And what is the solution? Is the solution what you are doing and how you are doing it? There are challenges. Uh, Brian says there are problems. You, you said that one? But Michael says that one? Uh, that the, the, there, are some, there is some argument there. <laughs> so all of us are agreed on this table and actually in the country that there are challenges about this particular transaction. And we should have envisaged it, thought about it before we inked a deal. Assuming this deal doesn't go through, are there economic consequences? And how do we deal with them? So, there's going to be a long protracted legal battle in Kenya, and it has and, started. And for it, example, one a, of the parties... Who has the, 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 the British. Mm. No, no, the order. The, the, there's the court, already a court the order. Court paper, yes. There's already... Uh, there is already a court order. Yes. And you know, because uh, one of the parties is there. that suit. Mm. So, this, I don't think this is something which is going to take place uh, and be concluded in you know, one, one week, one day. No, it's going to be protracted. Look at the names of the people behind that petition. Just look at them. You are Kenyan, and somehow, because the, you have been part of this Kenyan politics and so on, the combos and so on. These are not... He, he has a bit of Kenya blood in him. <laughs> no, he's just, he, he's, he has friends in Kenya, political friends in I Kenya. Think I, 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 I can see my... My Mutawani. My Mutawani is doing very well. He's answering it very well. 
It doesn't have his but he has friends in the Kenyan so Look, the, the names like those combos and so on, they are not Yoka Chutuzia. These are the people who matter in that place. And the judiciary in Kenya seems to be a little bit different from the judiciary within this region. Because it is also in He's in, a, you, he's in the you department. Think, you think I wanted to be clear? <laughs> I did want to, it was deliberate. <laughs> he, he's in that very department. <laughs> so, Mike, yes, whatever you are saying is smooth sailing. But I'm telling you, there are so many obstacles, hurdles along the way. And if by the time you eat this deal, you never envisage this sort of thing. Then that's what you are going to have a big problem. Let's, let's, let's have uh, this, this topic is not going away. Let's come back to you uh, for two minutes uh, to conclude on it only for now because the topic is going to grow and grow and grow. All major wars in modern wars, recent, recent wars, have been on oil. Yes. The war in Iraq, the war in uh, Libya, the war in Angola, the war in Nigeria, Biafra. If you look at now Russia, Ukraine, it's, it's just fuel, strategic. Now, I want, definitely, I do agree with the brothers and my sister here. And as, as uh, I told her, say, fuel is a very fluid uh, geopolitical matter. Very, very fluid. But let's come back home. Let me get you to contextualize a few arguments here. Currently, as we, as, as we talk now, fuel in, between, in, in East African region, the three major countries, Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda. Fuel is more expensive in Kenya than Uganda and Tanzania. And yet Tanzania, Kenya is the one that is what you call the gate of entry of fuel to the region. Because Kenya has got nine different levies and taxes on fuel, including the recent increase of VAT from 8% to 16%. So fuel has gone, today it's about 200 and, uh, 217 shillings per liter in Kenya. It's all about taxation. Taxation. It is, uh, Whereas Uganda, we have one tax levy, yeah. which uh, Kenya, the fuel levies and these nine contribute 55% of the cost of fuel at the pump price, 55 percent, because of these nine taxes. That's number one. Number two, I also want you to get to understand that it's a sovereign right for Uganda, and the lawyers here know it very well, for you to have access to the sea. That's the sovereign right. So to determine import into the country, and that's why you want to know that when in 2007-2008, when Kenya had political upheavals, uh, fuel in this country, when they banned trucks in Oldere, Nakuru, and so on and so forth, and uprooted the railway line, fuel went up beyond the reach of the ordinary pump or ordinary consumer. Yeah. Now, because we did not have strategic reserves, when a country is unlocked, there are two, there are two things that you must have. But the, the, there are two the things. reserves we have, can they run let, you for months? Let me tell you one thing. The idea now for the country is to look at two things, rolling stocks, which is a component of trade of fuel, and strategic reserves. Now, how that is determined is a policy framework within the ministry. Mm -hmm. Now, the other point that you need to get to understand is that in terms of imports, even if we are to look at an alternative of Tanzania, all our major inflows into the country downstream, 90% 90, 90 is through Kenya. 10% is for Tanzania. What does that mean? Because there is no pipeline from either Tanga or Mwanza, uh, or Dar es Salaam to Mwanza, and the only alternative means you can uplift or lift that fuel from is by road. Tanzania does not allow a single truck of Kenya or foreign to move fuel out of Tanzania to any neighboring country, unless that truck is delivering fuel to that specific country. The, the transporters are very strong on that. What am I saying? In terms of logistics for a country like yeah. Uganda, I want you to get to 
the bottom of the whole matter, mm. which is very, very that's, important. Yes, that's the one we shall discuss next to reduce To reduce the palm price in the country is a major uh, advantage to the country because fuel is a cost pusher. It's a major cost pusher. Yeah, but really, so Mike, this this decision, mm, which is strategic, say yeah, even, core say and even strategic, even. is so, correct. Thank you. Thank now you. the argument is mm. the supply, the supplier. Yeah. That is where you need to know wait. to put the argument. Let us wait. Even the cost. He has said. Transportation. Yeah, he has said. That is where you need to think about the argument. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, so, not, not the challenge. You, you, so, Honorable Semaju and Joseph Otieno, this is one of your favorite subjects. Equal Opportunities Report. We can have a little taste here. Um, because you've been talking and talking and talking and talking. So, uh, and you know, uh, look at that whole corner there. Uh, really, that, that is. I have not read the report, but I have read the reports on the report, <coughs> including uh, Ankole dominating public jobs and so on and so forth. But For me, know. even if there was oh, <laughs> even if there was on, on this topic, if they just even if they wake you up just like that, you are ready. Because that, this is what I live. I have told you, Oscar, during the Christmas period, during the Christmas period, there is traffic jam from Kampala up to Chazang, well for flowing in one direction. I have used the road oh, yeah. uh, going to Palisa to Komi. And I was the only car for, for, for about 40 minutes. Even asking the MPs from there. That road going to Palisa and then Kumi. But here, you see the traffic jam every day. Here, they, 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 I am very happy that now it is being done by a commission. Mm. When I checked the commission, because I did a report on human resources, 49% of the CEOs were from Western Uganda. 49%. And corresponding but, but some people say you, you are unfair in breaking down Western Uganda. You always say Western Uganda, but when you come to Central, you never say uh, Buganda and Busoga and that one you you I say Uganda. Please. You say Central Uganda. For us, Central Uganda. Yeah, see, we are not Central. Oscar, Oscar, for us, we are Easterners. You don't you don't get to East, but Busoga no, is. No, 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 no. Oscar, May, yes. Ogeno, this, and Mike, we are Easterners. Yes. Proud Easterners for that matter. In this, uh, Oscar, <laughs> the central region, by the way, you need to be very careful when you are looking at it. For example, this report looks, at, looks about the presentation in Parliament, who has MPs. Nearly now, 30% of the MPs in, in Uganda are from Wankore. They are the ones who are representing districts in Uganda. These things never happen in, in other areas. That's why you see, I've seen uh, Mao, Mao's writing today. When he speaks about Wara, let me tell you, if what Mao has said had been said by a Muganda about Wara, you would be in prison. I have been jailed here for promoting sectarianism, for complaining at the time that all the generals in the military were from Wankore and speaking one language. And for two years I was between Uganda Road and the police. Yeah, but they speak so they speak in Yankoli. I have told you one thing. When the queen, when the queen, when the queen came here at the checkpoint at Serena, they are saying, "Ogo amu checking." That's the language they are using. Even when the queen was visiting, so this report helps some of us. So I've been charged with promoting sectarianism. I said that axis there. Axis off. Is this a report? You are also profiling. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's shocking. It is shocking. No, I'm Mr. Uganda nationalist. You know, you know, but and very UPC, yes. No, under UPC government, there is no way in which such a thing would happen. But genuinely, no, there's no way. And 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 and, 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 and peak, peak, peak every facet of government and representation. So, in the, we're, we're not debating because we're out of time. Yes, no, no, I, I know, no, no, no. The, the report is there, but I just, I just want to help the West here. It turns out that I was on a different a certain program the other day, and that uh, in the whole talk about Westerners and generals in the army. Oscar, 
when people start talking about this topic, I don't know why, why they shy away from it, especially when we are mentioning facts. And then people say, oh, it's not tribalistic, and Banyakole also qualified. That's, that's, that's not the, 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 that is not the point. You can't run away from facts that speak for themselves. And even if you run away from them, but you also don't want to come across as someone who's tribalist. Of course, you, you don't, but it depends on how you say it. Because the offense that was created was broadcasting and writing. But being sectarian and appointment is not an offense. When you write no. about it, it's an offense. Oscar. Um, um, someone was was telling me we Banyoro are disadvantaged because people keep saying we are from the west and yet we haven't benefited. I told 